The land and the sea have changed little in the 450 years since Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo sailed past the point and into the bay. He sought the legendary Northwest Passage. Instead, he discovered a paradise of natural beauty in temperate seasons with a climate favorable to comfort and health. Cabrillo claimed the land for Spain, christened it San Miguel, and continued his search for glory leaving the first European footprints in the sands of San Diego. The new land, this San Diego, is capacious, pleasant, and well-suited, wrote Julio de Oliban to King Philip II of Spain. Yet it would be 150 years before the Spanish crown encouraged settlement of the area. And then only when it feared Russian traders from the north would get there first. Those who came found a moderate year-round climate. Clear skies, and sea air that seemed to have a medicinal effect. A mecca for hopeful consumptives, wrote one visitor, and financiers who connect health and community progress. By the early 1800s, San Diego had become the de facto capital of Upper and Lower California, unofficially usurping the title from Monterey, because Governor Echendia found the mild climate and lovely senoritas of the South more to his liking. The scenery is varied and exquisitely beautiful, wrote department store pioneer and San Diego philanthropist George White Marston in 1870. The great broad quiet mesas, the picturesque canyons, the bold line of the distant mountains, the wide hard ocean beaches, the great bay, the caves and coves of La Jolla. The unique Torrey Pines. These are but some of the features of the landscape that should be looked upon as precious assets to be preserved and enhanced, Marston wrote enthusiastically. San Diego's skyline places it among the distinctive cities of the world with style, grace, and a sense of the dramatic. The angular emerald plaza, each slope at a precise 33 and a half degrees, the exact latitude of San Diego. The chiseled features of the Hyatt Regency at 400 feet, the tallest waterfront hotel on the west coast. Alonzo Horton, whose vision and enterprise first set America's finest city in motion, wrote historian Elizabeth McPhail, called San Diego heaven on earth and the best spot for building a city I ever saw. In 1867, he purchased the 960 acres of what is now downtown for $260. The land became known as Horton's Addition, and the Connecticut Yankees set about its development. Knowing business would be the lifeblood of Newtown, Horton craftily divided the area into smaller blocks to create more high-traffic corner lots for merchants. He gave away free land to churches, reasoning they would encourage families to settle nearby. And families did come, and they stayed. In 1871, World-renowned journalist J. Ross Brown termed San Diego the most attractive point for investment and speculation on the Pacific coast, or, so far as I know, in the United States. Alonzo Horton's name remains in San Diego as the legacy of a man who died poor, but with the city built all around him.
Water has always been San Diego's magnet. From 1855 to 1891, Pacific Ocean travelers were welcomed by the Star of the Silver Gate, the old Point Loma lighthouse. Its beacon stood 462 feet above the surf, higher than any other lighthouse in the nation, guiding visitors, new settlers, gold rush prospectors, and merchant goods through treacherous sea lanes and unpredictable currents. On a clear night, the beam of her light could be seen 20 miles at sea. Low clouds and fog, common to the bay's entrance, however, led ultimately to the raising of a new lighthouse in March 1891 at its current location on Pelican Point. Today the waterfront combines the buzz of commerce with the beauty of design. The vision of this new San Diego from the bay, wrote John Nolan, with the mountains, noble in outline and rich in color in the background, is enough to move the most sluggish to action. The sea still brings business to San Diego. Instead of ships, however, it can take any of many forms. From Juan Cabrillo to the present, San Diego Bay has been a snug harbor to gallant warships. Today, the area remains home to one of the largest military establishments in the world. Star of India. Since 1863, she has circled the globe 21 times and now stands as a monument to a glorious past, the oldest iron hull, square rigged merchant vessel still capable of sailing. Her lines creaking, her decks beckoning to children who would be Richard Henry Dana two years before the mass. Nearby, the Convention Center's grand design speaks of San Diego's ocean-going heritage. Its Teflon-coated sails were designed by architect Arthur Harrison to be both a tribute and an inspiration. In the early 1900s, San Diego boasted the largest tuna industry in the world. Changing laws and a global economic shift have sent the Saners to new ports of call. For centuries, the island of Coronado, or islands as they were then, served only to hold back the sea from the bay and to offer wild game to any San Diegan hearty enough to row across the channel for a little hunting. Two Midwesterners, however, Elijah Babcock and Hampton Story, had a dream. Instead of scrub brush, they saw a seaside resort hotel with hundreds of luxurious rooms, offering diversion, the sun, the sand, and rejuvenation. 
In 1888, their dream, the Grand Hotel del Coronado, opened its doors. A million dollar monument to Victorian society, it had been built in less than a year, becoming and remaining the largest wooden structure in the United States. With 399 guest rooms, grand ballroom, and crown dining room, the Dell was built without benefit of blueprints. The Reed brothers, who were railway depot architects from New Jersey, would simply sketch and build, sketch and build. The sheer size of the Dell required its own steam generating plant to power its electric circuits. It was the largest installation of electrical power ever undertaken at that time. Today, the Grand Lady of the Isle has lost none of her romance or charm. Where once ferry boats were the only connection between San Diego and Coronado, the landmark Coronado Bay Bridge spans the channel. Rising 240 feet above the harbor, the bridge is uniquely designed to incorporate floating centerpieces that can be dislodged in a national emergency, allowing warships to pass through from their moorings in the South Bay. For many, Coronado is a step back in time, both in architecture and pace. San Diego's love affair with the sea has never waned. It is a relationship that expresses itself in fresh and exciting ways. That fills our senses with adventure. Wonder. And reflection. Eden was lost to the world, reported the San Diego Union in 1887, until Ocean Beach was discovered. Much the same could be said for each mile of white sandy beach from Oceanside to Imperial Beach.
Each grain is a magnet, wrote one grateful transplant, drawing soreness and ache from the very marrow of my bones. As medicinal as the beach is for the body, it is also refreshing for the mind, combining color and contrast into stunning beauty. La Jolla. Spanish for the jewel, La Jolla is considered by residents and visitors to be one of the most beautiful spots in all the world. Its coastline and vistas have made La Jolla a special place since its settlement in the mid-1800s. San Diegans once rode the Abalone Limited to dive at the cove for shellfish, and swimmers still gather each day to enjoy what has been called the most perfect beach in all San Diego. There is more to author Max Miller's town with the funny name, however, than coves and caves and spectacular surf. La Jolla will always be the village, where once cottages had names instead of numbers, and where the lifestyle continues its unhurried, quiet pace. It is this sense of peace and the beauty of paradise that makes San Diego unlike any other place. It is what makes us love living here, what makes us San Diegans above all.
San Diego defies simple description. It is more than a postcard come to life. It is where men and women have labored lifetimes, striving to maintain nature's legacy for generations to come, while carving the raw landscape into a peerless habitat to be enjoyed and shared. At midnight, January the 1st, 1915, President Woodrow Wilson pushed a button in Washington, D.C., officially opening the Panama, California Exposition. It was a crowning moment for San Diego's Balboa Park, a moment that has lasted over 80 years. The great cities of the world value an unspoiled green for future generations, declared San Diego's founders when they created this spacious park in 1868. The unspoiled green was little more than jackrabbits and tumbleweeds until a remarkable woman named Kate Sessions agreed to plant a hundred trees a year in return for 30 choice acres to establish a nursery. The pioneering horticulturalist traveled as far away as the Hawaiian Islands, gathering many trees and plants now common throughout San Diego. It was the exposition, though, that gave the park purpose and life. Master architect Bertram Goodhue's Spanish colonial design sprang from his passion for history and became a major architectural theme throughout the region. Architect Irving Gill's elegant Cabrillo Bridge, patterned after a bridge in Ronda, Spain, was built to extend Laurel Street through the park. The park entrance was renamed El Prado, after the famous Paseo del Prado in Madrid. Nowhere is Goodhue's soul more evident than in his rich masterpiece, the California Building, with its majestic 200-foot tower and brilliant dome. Atop the California Tower, what might be Juan Cabrillo's San Salvador floats endlessly as it presides over his most famous discovery. So successful was the palatial design of Bertram Goodhue that filmmaker Orson Welles used Balboa Park to stand in for the opulent Xanadu in his classic Citizen Kane. Classical statuary welcomes over half a million visitors to Balboa Park each year, inviting them to enjoy a place where the past mingles with the present in a continuing spectacle of art, nature, and inspiration. Inspiration and invention go hand in hand when it comes to San Diego's aviation history. Over the flats of Otay Mesa in 1883, John J. Montgomery soared 600 feet in a homemade glider. It was the first controlled winged flight in history. In 1910, Glenn W. Curtis established a flying school on North Island and invited Army and Navy officers to receive free flight instruction. Curtis's flying school would become the North Island Naval Air Station, considered the birthplace of military aviation. In 
It is lucky Lindy, though, that San Diego best remembers. The namesake of San Diego's international airport, Charles Lindbergh, was just another flying daredevil when he asked Claude Ryan to build him a special airplane. It would be christened the Spirit of St. Louis, but it was born in San Diego. Today, Lindbergh Field is one of the most conveniently located international airports in the United States. Nearly a million passengers a year are treated to a breathtaking view upon arrival in America's finest city. San Diego has grown from Alonzo Horton's original addition. It has become a center of education. Technology has prospered here. Yet for all its changes, San Diego remains refreshingly unpretentious. We're a city of nearly two million that continues to be the place George Marston described as where people take time to be pleasant. It's a spirit you feel throughout the area. Whether you're uptown, downtown, in the suburbs, the beach communities, the thriving townships of the north, or the sister cities around the county.
Cool coastal breezes turn warm and dry as they blow across the boulders and through the canyons of San Diego's backcountry. A short journey inland and the landscape is transformed from ocean cliffs to desert chaparral and open space. Where else can you find sun in the morning and take a drive through snow the same afternoon? to the majestic peaks of the Cuyamacas and dramatically changing seasons. Nestled among the Cuyamaca and Laguna Mountains, the town of Julian enjoys a rich history of gold rush days in the 1870s, when prospector H.C. Bickers stumbled on the area's first great claim while following bear tracks just above the township. Bickers' George Washington Mine was one of the richest in Southern California. Today the mother load is mined out, but Julian remains bustling and prosperous as a famous center for apples and apple products. The dry wind blows eastward from the top of Mount Laguna, down plunging arroyos to the desert floor. To Carrizo Gorge, where the magnificent Goat Canyon Railway trestle stands 200 feet high and reaches 600 feet across the canyon mouth. It stands today in silent tribute to our unquenchable thirst for progress. San Diegans have labored over the years to improve on nature's perfection with great care and planning. An outgrowth of the 1915 Panama, California Exposition, today the San Diego Zoo is considered one of the world's finest, with over 4,000 animals and the largest collection of exotic birds in the Western Hemisphere. In 1972, the Wild Animal Park opened at San Pascual near Escondido. Designed to replicate the habitat of an African plain, the Wild Animal Park covers 1,800 acres and is the permanent home for 1,500 mammals and birds. Mild daytime temperatures and cool evening drafts have made the North County area a haven for hot air balloonists. As Bing Crosby once sang, where the turf meets the surf in Old Del Mar, thousands gather each season to combine stunning scenery with the sport of kings. On the scenic cliffs above La Jolla, the Torrey Pines golf courses south and north are the only public courses in the nation to host a major PGA Tour event.
San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium, or simply the Murph, home to San Diego's football and baseball teams, the Chargers and the Padres. In the mid-60s, San Diegans turned the marshlands and salt tide pools of Mission Bay into one of the largest aquatic parks in the world. A playground for some of the nearly 50,000 boats of all sizes that call San Diego waters home port. Celebrated for its combination of entertainment and research, SeaWorld has brought the science of marine biology to the forefront of public understanding. The Belmont Coaster is an example of San Diego's reverence for history. Once dilapidated and condemned, the 1925 coaster was restored by a community-wide effort, making it the only roller coaster in the country to receive national landmark status. Among all these attractions, however, it is Mother Nature and her special cast that remains center stage. All these things attract us, but there's more to San Diego. There's something extraordinary about this place, something indescribable that affects each of us. Whether you live here or are just passing through, there are moments we share. The smell of the sea. The cry of a red-tailed hawk. A sunset. These are our common bond. We are San Diegans above all. To order a VHS cassette of San Diego Above All, call 1-800-266-5727. The price is $19.95 plus California sales tax. Include $3 for shipping. Please have your credit card ready.